Hey guys, Professor O'Kane here, and today we're talking about the Brent Mason right hand picking technique. Now you're probably thinking, didn't Brent cover this? He did, but he definitely did not cover it in this kind of depth. You might be thinking, well, why, why would you be getting any Brent information from this guy? <laughs> I started playing the Brent, what, what I loosely call the Brent Mason technique um, for decades now. I saw an interview where Brent was describing how he learned to play guitar and he learned as a child and he learned starting with a thumb pick. That makes a huge difference. So what he did intuitively, I ended up having to try and come up with a way to do it. So when you come from playing a flat pick to using a thumb pick, there is that period where you're trying to figure out what to do and how to do it and is there a stepwise way to do it. The purpose of this video is for you to be able to learn to use a thumb pick and if you're really heavily entrenched in Brent's vocabulary, it's gonna help you get a more authentic Brent Mason sound. If you kind of like Brent, I don't know why you wouldn't be totally in love with his playing, but if you kind of like Brent's playing and you want to go do something else far and beyond, that's totally possible. So without me blabbing anymore, let's get right down to it. So the most important thing that you need to embark on this picking style is a thumb pick. I'm using a Fred Kelly Bumblebee extra heavy. The reason why I use a Fred Kelly thumb pick in particular is because it moves like a flat pick. Now the fact that the pick moves like that would irritate a lot of thumb pickers, especially finger stylists. They like a very firm pick, something that doesn't move. I mean, there are a lot of great thumb pickers that play with picks that are immobile. For my personal taste, and because of the way I pick, which is using primarily economy picking, I like that feel. I like to feel like I'm using a flat pick and not have to use one. The thing that's the most important is that you feel comfortable with it. Now, if you're new to thumb picking, give yourself 50 hours playing a thumb pick before you decide yay or nay, because you just, you're not going to really understand how it feels until you've worn it and played it in a variety of situations or really just logged in those hours. You'll see, stick with it. Okay, so the next obvious thing we need to talk about are the nails. Brent uses fake nails. I understand that nails run the gamut between very soft and fragile to these, you know, steel things that I've got. There are many things that you can do to develop your nails, to make them harder. I would suggest that you Google that. It's It really goes beyond the scope of this video. And if you're really dead set on trying to get hard nails, there are things in your diet that you can change. There are paint on, kind of gelatin uh, infused nail polishes that you can use to try and help strengthen your nails. Or if you like to do like Brent does, get yourself some fake press on nails and go to a nail shop and have them glue them on for you. So this is what my nails look like. They are pretty short and I like them that way. It works great with electric. And I know that other people like longer nails. It's really what is what feels good for you. Now you might be wondering what this is. As you can see, this is 220, this is adhesive. We're not gonna talk about this, this is a little bit coarse. And this is 320. And what I find is I don't use um, a nail file, I use this sandpaper on a very flat, you know, this is a piece of tile on a very flat surface. And the way I use it is going from an, an angle like this, and as I'm scraping, I will go in a semicircle. So 
like this, and then I'll you can see myself I'll turn it like this to that direction. So I'll do the initial scrape here, and then I'll move to the 320 just to smooth it out. So you can see in slow motion, I'm going like this. And if you wanted to go finer than 320, you could always pull in this, whoops, the 600. So if using sandpaper seems a little bit rough for you, go ahead and go to your nearest pharmacy, go to the nail care department, and you're gonna have tons of tools to choose from. If you really wanna ignite your OCD, check out Classical Guitar Nail Care. I mean, those guys go absolutely insane with how they take care of their nails. So it's all up to you. How deep do you want to get into this? For myself, I just use something that works. I've noticed that recently having shorter nails seems to seems to work better for me. For, for you, you might like longer nails. There's really going to be a period of experimentation. Just go with it and have fun. Now we're going to check out the right hand exclusively. Okay, let's cover some basics here. Brent uses his thumb, first, second, and third fingers, just as you would suspect. Some people use the fourth, but I've never heard him talk about using the fourth. When he's playing his single note lines, this finger remains dormant for the most part. So he, he explains it as the thumb always starts on the downbeat. So you have thumb, middle, thumb, ring, thumb, middle, thumb, ring. One of the things you want to get used to is trying to make the nail sound sound as close in timbre to the pick sound as possible. It's not going to be perfect, but it's worth giving it a try. Now, if you're getting this, that's okay. It, that's bound to happen in the beginning and it certainly happens to me still because your nail can hang up especially if you have a corner on your nail that snags underneath the string um that happens to me regularly and i have to go you know scrape it down over there <laughs> Now, the third string is going to be a different feel than the first string. And it's going to be different here too. But you want to go for an evenness. Um, when you start having three notes per string, you have the challenge of having three picks all on one string in real time. So. It's worth practicing just the three notes over and over. If you do it like this, what's gonna happen is your fingers are gonna be doing a different up pick, in other words, a different finger pick or pluck as the three notes go around and around and around. Brent uses the first finger for doing pops, which sound great two fingers for double stops and three fingers for cards now here's a different approach I'm going to turn this way so you can see I'm going to do a C major scale but I'm going to start with the middle finger this time So I'm doing middle thumb, middle thumb, ring as a way to start out. And I, I find that I've started many of my lines with using the middle finger. So, and sometimes I'll do a hammer on and then start with my thumb. Thumb, middle thumb, ring, thumb, middle thumb, ring. Um, pentatonics are something different. A minor pentatonic. Um, I don't start it with a thumb. This is thumb, middle, thumb, ring, thumb, middle, thumb, ring. And you'll also notice, by the way, that my wrist, and so does Brent's, moves like this. And that's okay. You want to make sure you're not doing anything drastic. But a gentle back and forth is almost like in using your, you know, an alternate flat pick. Now, this is something that I do with a lot of my scalar moves, like going up the pentatonic scale or really any kind of scale. And that is to start with the thumb and then and do a hammer and then first finger, thumb, middle, thumb, ring, thumb, middle, thumb, ring, thumb. So 
all together. I'll turn this way so you can see. It's hard to keep my first finger out of the way. But you get this kind of sound. And I always like this as a way to start off my line where it sounds a little bit less attacky like and again you can see that I'm leading with my middle finger and maybe that's because I live in Miami as opposed to starting with my thumb both are totally valid and both are really worth exploring a little bit more on using this pointer finger if you notice this arpeggio right here, which is right out of C7, a way of using this hammer-on with the first finger also is to hammer, first finger, second finger, and then thumb again. Whoops. Now, you'll notice that also doing this banjo roll is very easy. The fingers are right here, whereas this is a lot more movement. Both are, again, are valid and they sound different. I would say learn them both. So you need to find what works for you. Thumb, middle, thumb, ring, thumb, middle, thumb, ring, starting with the downbeat, you know, using your thumb. Or do you prefer to start with your middle finger or maybe even your ring finger, which is kind of weird. But whatever, you're, whatever you fancy, choose a system. So thumb, middle, thumb, ring, or starting with your middle finger with the hammer on. However you want to start your scalar passages is what you should stick with and see how that works for you. So the name of the video is the Brent Mason Technique and Beyond, and this is the Beyond part. So how do we start breaking away from that sound? Um, not that we need to break away from that sound. Um, and I want to say that I have the most respect for Brent. Obviously, without him, I wouldn't be playing this way. Um, but the way to start moving away from that sound is to add a lot more legato into what we're doing. So if I use a C Mixolydian scale as the example here, three notes per string, I'm going to do dumb pluck hammer and I'm going to do that for all of the strings so dumb pluck hammer dumb pluck hammer and what I've done is I've done thumb middle hammer thumb ring hammer thumb middle hammer you don't have to do that you could just stick with thumb middle if you'd like and then descending the same way In my convoluted way, I tend to do middle, like starting with the middle, as I said uh, previously, middle, thumb, hammer, ring, thumb, hammer, and so on, and descending the same way. It looks like this. So using legato is the way to start changing the entire sound of this right hand technique. So I'm going to um, slowly noodle around with C mixolydian and the C minor pentatonic scale so you can get an idea. And I'll turn in a way that you can see what's going on with my right hand. The next way to start moving beyond is to start integrating your flat pick with your fingers. So in this case,
The next thing we can start doing is integrating other hybrid picking techniques such as Swybrid, which is where you are doing a sweep and hybrid picks along with the Brent Mason picking technique. So guys, if you stuck with me this far, you could tell this is really only the tip of the iceberg. If you want to see more of how this kind of right hand technique looks, check out some of my other videos or go to my Instagram account, which is the same name as this channel, Streetwise Guitar. And also don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, you know, that same old routine. And I'll catch you next time. Thanks for hanging out.